All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store. The BMW i4 M50. It's 100% electric and 100% BMW. Experience the power of over 500 horses stampeding at a whisper as BMW M-engineered handling takes you through every twist and turn. The complete suite of intuitive technology keeps you connected. The pure performance keeps your heart racing. The BMW i4 M50. Silence has never said so much. BMW, the ultimate electric driving machine. Hey, guys. Back at the playground again, huh? Yep. You know what this playground could use? A wine country. Heck, yeah. And some waves. So we could go surfing. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, love that. A redwood forest would be cool. I'm in. Ah, ski slopes. Let's do it. Um, can a girl go shopping? Yeah, baby. Wait. Did we just invent California? Discover why California is the ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh. If you feel it, put your hands in the air. Show some love to the new while you're there. Let's take it one day at a time. Did you and I outweigh? Happy Saturday, Outway fam. Amy here. And if you've heard some of my eating disorder story, you know that Katherine Hansen's book, Brain Over Binge, it was a huge part of my recovery. And I'm actually on her email list. So I get all the newsletters that she sends out. And today I opened up one that was talking about how celebrating success and recovery is an important part of her brain over binge approach. And I couldn't agree more. So I'm just going to read to you a part of what she put in this newsletter. Here's what she said about celebrating. When you generate excitement for your accomplishments in dismissing binge urges and eating adequately, you help new brain pathways form. Here are some ways to celebrate success and recovery without food. Go to a favorite place. Spend the money you would have spent on binging on something else you want. Relax and watch a show you enjoy. Treat yourself to some form of self-care. Read a favorite book or engage in a hobby. Celebrate with positive self-talk or simply notice and savor the good feeling of success. So there you go. That's part of Catherine's newsletter. I always enjoy getting hers in my inbox, and I encourage you to maybe sign up for them if you can, or if you have another program or someone else you follow and they have a newsletter. Having stuff pop up in your inbox is a great reminder and a form of encouragement to keep you going. Just like we talk about following accounts on social media that do the same thing. I feel like certain people that I follow, they are good for my recovery. They help encourage me so, so much. And another thing that we think helps people is just hearing from others. And I mentioned last week that we're going to start featuring more personal stories from other listeners just like you. 
So today we're hearing from Yasmin, who sent us an email, which by the way, feel free to email us if you have any questions or maybe you're interested in sharing your personal story so that you can be there for others. You know, the main thing is we just don't want anyone to ever feel alone. And so Yasmin emailed us. Again, you can too. And the email is hello at outwaypodcast.com. But we opened up Yasmin's email and she shared with us a little bit of her story. And we were like, you know what? We want you to share it with our Outway fam. So here is Yasmin's Edie story and her letter to herself. Hey, Outway fam. I'm Yasmin and I listen from Northern Virginia. I want to share my Outway story because a life without disordered eating outweighs everything. And I want to make sure people don't feel alone. Here's my story. I grew up in the suburbs of Northern Virginia, just outside of D.C., Growing up, my relationship with food, body, and exercise felt very natural and intuitive. Because my mom is Korean and my dad is Egyptian, I enjoyed food from both cultures. Making friends was always easy, and I felt confident with who I was, and I was pretty happy and carefree. While food came naturally to me, my mom was also a very intuitive eater and ate anything and everything. However, there were some undertones from her to my sister and I about standing up straight and sucking in our stomachs. Could this be societal? Maybe, but I don't think my mom meant to say these things maliciously. I think she was just trying to make sure we had good posture and an awareness of how we presented ourselves to the world. My dad, on the other hand, was always trying to lose weight. However, when my brother and I would spend every other weekend with him, we always ate fast food, which I loved, and he made his cleaner plates similar to how his parents raised him. Overall, I was taught a fairly normal approach to food and exercise from my family and friends, and my relationship with food didn't really change for years to come. My eating disorder began when I was in seventh grade. I had been in my first year of middle school at a huge secondary school. While I hadn't dieted before, I had been conscious of my body, how it looked, and my weight starting from when I was in sixth grade because of the friend group I was hanging out with. They would constantly talk about how they wanted to be skinnier, and naturally, I started to question if I was skinny enough. And soon it started to weigh on me even more and more and affect my self-esteem. I went from being a carefree elementary school girl to a young teen whose body was changing through puberty and hating myself because in my eyes, I was fat. That year in seventh grade, I made a deeper connection that eating less calories meant you'd lose weight, which meant you'd look prettier, that you'd be popular, boys would like you more, and that you'd be happy. Come summer, with all of that information in my subconscious, I would actually mistakenly skip meals because I was out and about with friends at the pool, walking to different friends' houses, then coming home for a bit before heading to dance class or basketball. And soon I noticed I had lost a few pounds and I was so happy about it and of course attributed that to the fact that I was skipping meals. This started a longing and addiction to skipping meals so I could see the scale go down every single day. If I didn't weigh less every day, that meant I would have to eat less. And this spiraled into not eating at all. By the end of that summer vacation, I had lost over 40 pounds. Not once did my family say anything, and the whole time I was getting praised and even encouraged by my friends about my weight loss. No one knew how unhealthy I was, and unfortunately, the encouragement and being thinner than ever, I had felt even more worthy than I had ever felt before. Looking back at pictures and remembering how I felt, I wasn't happy at all. I looked brittle, my skin was pale. I lost my period. I was never hungry. I was always cold. I would either isolate myself from any experiences involving food because I was scared, or I would lie to others saying I had already eaten. Even though I was suffering in so many ways and missing out on life, I didn't care because I was so numb to everything and nothing mattered more to me than seeing the number on the scale get lower day after day. What's crazier is that I didn't even know that I developed an eating disorder and didn't realize how thin I really was. That was until my sister came home from college after not seeing each other for a while, and I was shocked to see the state I was in. One night, my mom and my sister asked me to come downstairs and bring my scale. They made me weigh myself right there in front of them. I burst into tears, so embarrassed and scared. After a long conversation, my mom took me to my doctor, and the doctor said I was a normal weight, and nothing was wrong. While my mom did try to help me, she didn't realize how deep my eating disorder was. Once we got home, my mom gave me an ultimatum to either gain weight or else I wouldn't be able to take dance or play on my basketball team anymore. Knowing that I wasn't willing to give up my hobbies, somehow I was able to convince myself to eat again and as a result rapidly gained weight 
becoming heavier than I was before while still under eating. I didn't know what was going on and I was scared to eat. Now began seven years of restricting my food, obsessively weighing myself and over exercising in an effort to lose the weight again. But because my metabolism and hormones were so shot, nothing worked and I was trapped in a body I hated, a person I hated being and felt like there was never going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Come senior year of high school, I knew that I couldn't go to college looking like I did. I still felt fat and unworthy, and I couldn't be happy until I was thin. So I decided to completely stop eating and exercise even more. Throughout college, I became an obsessive runner, running for hours a day and continued to deprive myself of any food, and sometimes even water. I'd do anything to keep seeing the scale go down. I eventually lost a significant amount of weight by the end of college and maintained my weight through restriction and over-exercising through my mid-20s. Similar to my experience in middle school, my thinness still didn't bring me any happiness. I felt worse than ever, constantly exhausted physically and emotionally, so much that I didn't have the energy to run anymore. I would sleep as long as possible so that I wouldn't feel hunger and punish myself if the scale ever went up. I even remember coming home one weekend when I was living in New York City and my mom noticing that I was missing a patch of hair and later learned that I had developed an autoimmune disorder called alopecia areata. My body was completely shutting down and even gaining weight with extremely limited food. I felt like I couldn't bear to live in New York feeling so alone, tired, and numb in my body anymore and decided to move back to Northern Virginia where I could spend more time with family and friends. After a few months of having my very first apartment living alone, I tried as hard as I could to continue living the way I'd been for the past 13 plus years and eventually broke down one night and couldn't handle the pain any longer. My mom was abroad, so I called my older sister for advice on how to get out of this decade plus long spiral. And my sister had known for a long time I was restricting my food and using exercise to control my body, but was alarmed to hear the emotional, mental, and physical toll it had taken on me. With her advice, I eventually found a great eating disorder therapist and intuitive eating nutritionist who helped me recover. Recovering from my disordered eating slash eating disorder was the most difficult obstacle I'd ever faced. The hardest part was that I was scared of gaining weight and I didn't know if I could ever be quote unquote normal again. In recovery, I cried almost every single day because of the fear I had of getting fat. I wasn't weighing myself anymore. I was starting to eat more. My clothes were getting tighter. My body constantly felt bloated, and I was losing my identity. I felt like I no longer had control of anything. I saw my therapist and nutritionist every week for about a year and a half, focusing on improving my body image, accepting that this journey would be worth it, learning ways to cope with my body changes, relearn how to listen to my body's hunger cues as they began to normalize, eat without any restriction on what or how much I could eat, and figuring out my identity again. In that initial year of recovery, I had gained over 70 pounds, and I know that because I looked at my old annual physical weigh-ins once I was recovered, and sometimes I didn't recognize myself. While I did go through stages of learning to love myself, there were some times that I absolutely hated myself. Once I surrendered to my healing, I started to come around and see all of the positives in my recovery, and I had faith that everything would work out for me in the end. I started to enjoy food again took a more intuitive approach to movement and exercise, found energy for new hobbies, eventually began to accept myself for who I am, and my weight naturally began to normalize. I've been recovered for almost five years and have never felt so free with food and movement. While there are some days I struggle with body acceptance, body image, and a relationship with exercise, I live a happier life now than I ever have, and I'm continuously on a mission to be at peace. I have a short letter to myself, Yasmin, You are worthy and beautiful the way you are. I'm so proud of your strength, courage, and growth over the last five years. Always remember that you experienced your journey for a reason and that you are now happier, healthier, and stronger mentally, emotionally, and physically than you've ever been before. You are so loved by your family and friends and will be a wonderful mom in the future. Love, Yasmin. All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. 
You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable from sweat resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50 plus. This is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. Hey guys, back at the playground again, huh? Yep. You know what this playground could use? A wine country. Heck yeah, and some waves. So we could go surfing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. A redwood forest would be cool. I'm in. Ah, ski slopes. Let's do it. Um, can a girl go shopping? Yeah, baby. Wait. Did we just invent California? Discover why California is the ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com. Are you feeling overwhelmed by anxiety? Struggling to find restful sleep or plagued by a restless inability to focus? It's time to break free from the chains of mental health challenges and discover a path to healthy living. Welcome to Amen University, founded by renowned psychiatrist and brain health expert, Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Amen, alongside a team of esteemed doctors and experts in their fields, understands the struggles you're facing and are here to offer solutions. From debilitating anxiety to sleepless nights filled with worry, our courses are meticulously crafted to target Get these specific challenges head on. Join us on a journey of transformation led by Dr. Amen and a roster of top tier professionals. Say goodbye to the constant battle with your mind and embrace a future filled with hope and possibility. Visit our website today to explore our courses and start your journey towards a brighter tomorrow. Use code BRAIN10 and get 10% off. That's code BRAIN10 and get 10% off your first purchase. Amen University, because your mental health matters. When you have health insurance, it's easy to forget about your out-of-pocket costs. That can be a lot of money. But are your bills accurate? It's estimated over 50% of medical bills contain errors. HealthLock can help. HealthLock technology securely connects with your insurance and flags any overbilling, wrong codes, and fraud. You can even have HealthLock work on your behalf to get money back from select past bills. To date, HealthLock has helped its members save over $130 million. To save, visit HealthLock.com today.